You know how people say the thrift store is where the heat is? I journeyed to a few thrift stores myself, and I found a bunch of creative software from the early 2000s, and I'm going to use these CD-ROMs to create the freshest retro heaters you've ever seen. So let's go back in time and design like it's 1999. So I'm sure that when I mentioned creative software from the early 2000s, your first thought was the same as mine, which is kid picks. It was so popular to the point of being pretty much ubiquitous with Y2K computing. But I came to the conclusion that kid picks, although it's super fun to scribble around with all the fun brushes, it's not great if you're actually trying to achieve some sort of creative goal. What I'm looking for is less Mario paint and more Photoshop. But hey, since we're here, we might as well take a look at Disney Magic Artist as well. So I installed the software. No, I don't want to register. Don't forget to register later. I don't want to ever. And I found out very quickly that this is is a straight up clone of Kid Picks. It is the same thing. Once again, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of fun. It has Disney character sheets in it and you're supposed to try and draw Mickey to the best of your ability, but there's no mouse smoothing or anything of the sort, so it just looks really terrible. It has this really cool scene builder thing where you like drag and drop these little outlines of characters and backgrounds and stuff, and you can click a button for it to render and it just makes this horrible sound. I have a sudden craving for Taco Bell. But truly, we wouldn't be having the Y2K experience if it didn't crash for no reason. Anyway, let's move on to the real deal. Broderbund's The Print Shop Deluxe version 20, released circa 2003 for everything from 98 through XP. There are four discs, the install CD, the program CD, and both art discs. Now, when you install it, it gives you the option to copy all of the data from all four discs to your computer, which I totally did, because having to stop what I'm doing to insert the appropriate disc is really annoying. And when you do that, in total, it takes up about two and a half gigs on your hard drive, which is very impressive for the time. It took a really long time to install. I would guess like 15 minutes. And once it's done, Broderbund is like, hey, give us your home address and we'll give you over a hundred fonts. You want those? And when I say no, it's like, hey, that's okay. You can do it later. By the way, would you happen to want 500 hours for free on AOL? I'm just, just wondering. When you open Print Shop Deluxe 20 for the first time, it has the gall to be like, trade offer, you give us your home address, your phone number, your full name, and we'll save you some time. We know how valuable your time is. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. So because we installed all four discs of content, there are a ton of template projects to choose from. There's a ton of assets, graphics, clip art, fonts, all that kind of stuff. Most of them are terrible. Look at this man. Welcome, chicken tendies. I see you've noticed the golden egg behind me. Don't touch it, I'm waiting for it to hatch. This thing has such a dense collection of templates and you could edit the text to be lol funny. This template looks so bad that it actually somehow kinda has aura. Jamie, put those animals back in the computer when you're done. Done, okay? This creature looks like it belongs in one of those mascot horror games that kids worship and then get bored of after two weeks. This artsy photo of a keyboard genuinely goes so hard. This looks terrible, Jesus. <laughs> That's me trying to form one single thought, huh? The massive selection of templates is like super fun to scroll through just because there's so much. But no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It just says, come. Surely I'm allowed to show this, right? I I don't know what they were trying to do. All right, so we're going to have a kid blowing up a balloon, and the balloon just says, come. <laughs> so I didn't notice this the first time I was recording, but in the bottom left, you can switch from the front to the inside of the card, and then look, come to my balloon party, right? Makes sense. I thought it was going to be, oh, the front side says, come, and then the inside says, to my party, but it, it doesn't even do that. It says, come, and then it says, come to my balloon party inside. I think the redundant wording and the unfortunate connotation makes this one of the worst pieces of design I have ever seen. And this is one of the best pieces of design. This is effective propaganda. I'm fully convinced that George is indeed a super doggy. This right here, AI could never recreate this. This looks like it's straight out of Hypnospace Outlaw. Yep, I'm wanted dead or alive in 50 states for being too silly, honks my clown nose. Honk, honk, you are also in crippling debt. I was too funny and the software crashed. I lost everything. Okay, well, it's a good time to do the ad. This video is sponsored by Fabletics, and if you haven't checked them out yet, now is the time. They just dropped their August collection and it's all part of what they call the One Ecosystem. Basically, it's a lineup of super lightweight, breathable pieces that are made for hot summer days. My absolute favorite is the line of One Shorts. The fabric is stretchy, breathable, and sweat wicking. I love zip pockets. All pockets should have zippers forever. They don't slip, they don't ride up, and they hold beautifully in the heat. Fabletics sent me three different colors of One Shorts and I'm very grateful because it has become an incredibly valuable asset to my daily fits. But here's the deal. When you sign up with their VIP program, you unlock 80% off of your first order site-wide. <laughs> now I look like a big teddy bear. Being a VIP means you get one outfit credit every month. That can be a full two-piece set or any product up to hundred bucks. Plus you get access to VIP only drops, exclusive styles, sales, and even a free membership to their Fit app, which is loaded with workout programs and wellness tools. I know you struggle with commitment, so you can skip any month between the first and the fifth without being charged 
charged no pressure and no catch. Whether you're just trying to beat the summer heat or you're just looking for a bit more confidence and comfort in your fits, check the link in the description. Fabletics is offering 80% off for their VIP signups, so you can try their stuff out without breaking the bank. So big thanks to Fabletics for sponsoring this video, and now on with the show. All right, let's hop back into the print shop. I'm not done yet. This man is my friend, and I want everyone to know it. Yeah, this template, I'm just editing it so that I can learn how the software works. Headlines are really cool. It's like Microsoft Office Word art, but completely customizable. All right, that's it. No more egg for you, mister. I'm deleting it. Why do I have to wait for the drawer to open every time? Okay, so I'm putting a YouTuber thumbnail arrow just to make sure that there's no confusion about who my friend is. And I'm gonna add a radiant glow because he's beautiful and I think we're done. I think this is good. See, this is what happens when you become friends with me. Well, in theory, that is. I have yet to acquire my first friend because they're worried I'm going to make a weird bumper sticker of them. All right, let's shift gears and take a look at print artist CD-ROM. As you can see, this copy is actually sealed. So let's go ahead and pop that open really quick. It's kind of wild that this managed to stay unopened for 25 years. As for when this released, I have no idea. It says 2000 on the disc, it says 2002 on the splash screen, and then it says 2003 in the directory name. Who am I supposed to believe? Which one do I shoot? So Print Artist is cut from the same cloth as the Print Shop Deluxe. It has a bunch of templates you can edit, that sort of thing. But it seems like Print Artist has a bigger focus on like crafts and like projects that you can print out and make, like a basket and stuff like that. But because there's a wider variety of categories, there's less in each one. You'd expect there to be like a thousand t-shirt templates, but there's five. Just based on sheer probability, somebody has a buggin shirt in their closet that they printed 25 years ago using this exact CD-ROM. Because of the lacking selection of templates in Print Artist, at least compared to the Print Shop Deluxe, the creative juices were not flowing with this one. Like I was digging through all the graphics as well. Just trying to find something usable was very difficult because either they're too generic or too specific. I couldn't get that nice middle ground of something useful. So after 20 minutes of not getting anywhere with Print Artist, I threw in the towel and went back to the Print Shop Deluxe. But I thought I'd spice it up a little bit by adding some fonts into the mix. We've got professional, creative, and elegant. When I popped in the disc, it offered to install a font manager. A lot of graphic designers use font managers, so this makes sense. Post installation, it asked if it could go online to check for an update. This CD-ROM set is from 2006, so there's no way those servers are still up, but just for a laugh, I said it could do it anyway. And yeah, of course it didn't work. Everyone point and laugh, haha, you failed to connect to the server. On first open, the font manager creates a backup of all of your fonts, great idea. Any graphic designer will tell you that Windows is infamously bad at handling fonts, like even on modern Windows. So this UI is a little bit confusing. I don't know where it's pulling the fonts from exactly, and I figured out that it pulls them straight off the CD and then copies them to the Windows font directory. Now what's the point of that if you can just copy them yourself? Well, we're about to find out, watch this. If I select everything and then hit install, it says, although new computers can handle up to a thousand installed fonts and up to 1,000 installed fonts installed at any time. You should never have more than 500 fonts installed to get the best performance. That is true even now. It's the same in modern Windows. And a font manager streamlines the process of previewing what fonts you want and selecting which ones you want to install and managing the ones that are already installed. So naturally, I installed every single font across all three discs. If there are consequences, it will be funny. Anyway, back to the Print Shop Deluxe. I found this creeping little kitten in the art gallery. Although the Print Shop Deluxe's UI definitely has aged a little bit, it is impressively intuitive and like elegant to use. The headline editor is so much fun. And it's even more fun now that I've added 9 million fonts to it. Clearly I'm going for a very gaudy, like overstated vibe because that's super iconic to the time period, but I can absolutely see how capable this software is for a variety of contexts. I meowed 9,476 times in 14 minutes. Can you beat my record? This is plenty good for now. I'm gonna come back to it later. The art gallery in Print Shop Deluxe is awesome for getting inspiration. I just can't help myself but to start mashing a bunch of ideas together. For images, you can use a thing called the Photo Workshop. I have a monitor and a PC and the monitor is tinted really orange orange, but I wanted to match the PC tower, so I tinted it a little bit blue to counteract it, tweaked the brightness and contrast just a little bit, and now it looks like it matches perfectly. That's the type of thing I do in like five seconds in Photoshop. Gotta add a headline, because it's like the coolest thing in this software. That's why I keep bringing it up, it's because it's really cool. It's like word art, but like good, like actually good. Look how cool this looks. It's already off to such a great start. So I was thinking that Birthday Card Maker would have a bunch of clip art that I could use, and when I popped the disc in my computer, I was greeted by this menu from friggin' Cosme. Like the 6,000 sound effects Cosme. What? Why why is it asking me what program to install? The one that's on the disk, what do you mean? So I open up the CD-ROM file system and yeah, there's just a ton of programs on here. Anyway, so I found Birthday Card Maker and selected it. And then, oh my God, copy protection. The second word on the third line of the program description. So you gotta look at the back of the manual and sure enough, second word, third line, it's program. Yes, I want to install. I know the password, it's program, let me in. And in that moment, I realized I didn't just put the password into the installer. I put the password into the thing that extracts the installer, which means if I can bypass this extraction process and just run the resulting extracted setup files, I can effectively use any of the software that's included on this disk. So I dropped the password protected exe directly 
into Uni Extract 2, and it just worked instantly. Hey, software developers, uh, you should know that encryption was invented to prevent this exact thing from happening. And because they didn't, I could easily pirate all of the software on this disc. I was able to get all of these meows without paying a dime. Obviously, this is all fair game because this is abandonware. Like, I couldn't pay for it even if I wanted to because, as we have learned from previous videos, Cosme is very much dead and gone and Ziggurat never responded to my email. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting way off track. Birthday card maker, that's why we're here. Okay, so this software is genuinely so terrible because the templates are just text that it puts onto a card for you. Am I crazy or is the text that goes inside of the card the easy part? And then the resulting card looks so bad. The clip art it comes with is actually pretty good, but it's sort of unapplicable for my use case. More what I'm looking for is like ingredients to a larger recipe as opposed to smaller completed pieces of art. I realized that the software I was using to view that cute dog was not one that I installed. It opened in a vector editing program called Advanced Drawing, which actually shipped with the Print Shop Deluxe. And it's very good actually. It'll be coming more into play later though. But yeah, since the birthday card maker thing was bunk, let's try Hallmark Card Studio 2 Deluxe instead. I'm hoping this has some interesting resources or clip art or something I can use. Surely there's something useful across all four discs. So I got it installed and then right away upon opening the software, it tells me that some of the content might be considered unsuitable for children and asks me if I want to turn on the kid lock. What? What could possibly be explicit about a card software? Like, like greeting cards that you sent to grandma! I guess we're gonna find out because I'm not enabling the kid lock. What, are you kidding me? Unfortunately, you can't install the CD content to the hard drive. You just have to swap disks to access some parts of the software. And by the way, it just has like the worst UI I've ever seen. It looks like it's made in Flash. It, it actually might be. This was the time period where people actually did that. How would you like to print out a card that looks worse than what you personally could draw? Sorry, does anyone else feel like the greeting card industry is getting desperate? If it's a holiday, sure. Send holiday cards once a year. But you will never, ever catch me sending chintzy paper through the mail just because. It seems fitting that these just because cards are full of jokes about golf and microbrew because they know that upper class boomers are the only people that would carry such a stupid tradition forward of sending a card just because. Okay, so I found the reason that there is the kid lock at the beginning. All right, so the front of the card says, I have a question. And then you open it and it says, how long do I have to go without, oh, I can't say that, oh my God. Grandma is actually weeping right now. Get well wishes for a sweet cat. I love the art, it's really cute. Hope it's not long to your cat, oh my God. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Next time, don't let your cat eat entire dollar bills out of your wallet. So all of the card software ended up not being useful at all for one reason or another. The Hallmark one was very pre-made. Like it was basically already existing Hallmark cards that you could just change the text in. So now I'm back to the Print Shop Deluxe to try and make some more designs. I found this really cool like vector computer clip art, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I didn't like the arrow. I didn't like some of the background stuff, but they let you export it. And then you can edit the vector using the advanced drawing software, which just like the Print Shop Deluxe is immediately intuitive and a delight to use. And then once you're done editing, you can just drop it right back into the print shop. I'm not used to software from this time period having such good conveyance and like beautiful UI. I paid one singular dollar for this entire software suite at a thrift store. Okay, so to finalize these designs and get them ready for actual print, I am using Photoshop. However, to be a good sport, I'm using a very old version of Photoshop that still runs on Windows XP. I also made this cool Y2K like text design. I think it's really cool, but I feel like it doesn't really stand on its own and I couldn't fit it into the other designs. Like I tried to smoosh it into the Y2K design, but it didn't really fit anywhere into the design, so I just kind of left it out. But yeah, I'm super happy with this design, so I'm going to consider this final. As for the Y2K compliant design, I really didn't like how the screen was very clearly off and you could see reflections in it. So I quickly photoshopped the screen to make it look like it was on and glowing. Then I added the floppy and the CD and made them glow a little bit. Then I added alpha and cleaned it up a bunch. Major downside of the Print Shop Deluxe is that it doesn't handle transparency at all when exporting, which is really annoying, but it's nothing I haven't handled before. I can add alpha to an image in my sleep. But yeah, I'm going to call this one final as well. And then we've got this silly meower. I'm going to turn it into a bumper sticker. But when I went to export this one, none of the others, just this one, it would say, please enter an integer between two and 4096. But if you just keep hitting, okay, it eventually gives up and works fine. I don't, I don't know what it's complaining about. What is this thing yapping about? Yeah, just doing standard stuff, adding transparency, putting the background in. There you go. I like that you can see me struggling with the old version of Photoshop here because the keyboard commands are so different. Ah, it hurts me. It hurts my soul. I'm going to call this one final as well. Yippee, they're all done. So I transferred the final PSDs over to my main PC. A month 
month ago, I launched my merch store, Clue.ink, and you guys have been so hype on the designs, and I really, really, really appreciate that. And right now, if you head over there, you can find the Design Like It's 1999 collection, featuring designs made on an operating system from the year 2000, and using software from the Y2K era that I found at a thrift store. Thank you for watching, and thank you to everyone on Patreon.com slash Clue. Whoa! Those names were really fast this time. That was weird. Well, I guess that's all I've got for you. Uh, I'll see you guys really soon. Mwah.